Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, wow, wow. Praise the Lord. A very good morning, afternoon, evening, or whatever time you are watching me right now in whichever country. I bring to you greetings from the womb of God, the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. You know, Jesus came to do much more than the world has known. Jesus came to bring us into the fellowship, the community of the God kind. So in 1 Corinthians 1, 9, it says that God is faithful by whom you were called to the fellowship of his Son. If you haven't known Christianity as an indwelling, a union with God, you are missing out on so much. You see, this thing Jesus came to do, oh boy, I thank my God that we are in the age when the reality of what Jesus came to do is coming back to the whole world. Can you imagine a life, oh, Rashandi Kobarahito Skima, of living 24 hours a day in the communion of the Godhead, irrespective of whatever you are involved in. Where you are seeing Jesus, seeing the Father, seeing the Holy Ghost. It's a community of God. The Bible said that whosoever confesses Jesus as Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. First John 4, 15. You have been enfolded into Christ. Oh boy. You read a passion translation of 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Said, if a man is enfolded into Christ, People of God, this thing is sweeter than people have known. I pray that you give me your attention. As we go in the next weeks and months and years, you wonder whether this is the Christianity you've had. Because it's a place of glory. I bring you greetings from the Godhead. And I invite you to mature into that place of rest in God. On this note, I welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite regular devotion, bringing you teachings that will help you enjoy your life, training you in the truth of God's word to bring you into the full measure of the stature of Christ, making you effective in the work of the ministry until together we can bring many more humans into God's eternal plan for their lives. We've been dealing with the subject of the valley of Jesus, and we first looked at what are you doing with Jesus? We spoke to those who have not yet received him. We said, you might have been hearing of Jesus, Jesus. And you thought, oh, he's one of those religious leaders. This is my religion. That is my philosophy. Jesus is for someone else. No, Jesus is a universal necessity. Why? Because he is the one that created everything, including you. It was only for the purposes of delivering mankind from their conscious state of enmity an alienation from the life of God that he took upon himself the form of a man to come to show men how God the Father is like. Man knows that. He's the eternal word. 
that existed in the beginning in the Father and with the Father, by whom all things were created. So, why are you not believing in him? If I also believed in him, maybe you are caught up in all these extremes of religiosity around Christ, which became the result of the dark ages. And for the past five to seven hundred years, the church has just been trying to recover the faith that was delivered to us in the first four to five hundred years after Jesus left. So there's, there's still a lot of religiosity, drama, gymnastics, worldliness, psychology around Jesus. A lot are not yet seeing the true Jesus, but gradually he's appearing. Glory to God, Calibado Setica. Oh, bless us, Jesus. We give you praise. He's appearing. He's appearing. He's raising his sons and daughters and granting them access into the mysteries of Christ, which he gave to Paul, which were buried for thousand plus years. And by those mysteries, the church is being washed of the effect of these dark ages and coming to the real Jesus. We moved on to look at the truth that you shouldn't be afraid to receive Jesus. Yes, the complexity of religion around Jesus makes it look like receiving Christ, you rather lose, you rather become entangled, but it's not so. In Jesus, you enjoy life much better, far incomparable to what any human could enjoy in a corrupt world. Today we are going to move forward and look at um, the topic, not believing is dangerous. Not believing in Jesus is dangerous. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love, for access to the mysteries of your will. Oh, Holy Spirit, our beloved Father, thank you for the great work you are doing around the world through the avenue of this family of the Good Life devotion all around the world. Thank you for life and spirit going forward into everyone. And the body is cleansed of diseases. Blood diseases are washed off. Cancers are washed off. Infections are washed off. Mental troubles are washed off. Fear is washed off. Feeling of insufficiency is washed off. Anxieties are dissolved. Faith is risen. Reality has come. Oh, glory to Jesus forever. Even as we fellowship with your word this time. Hallelujah. Wow. If you don't believe in Jesus, it is dangerous for you. <laughs> Mark 16, 16 says that. I'll just take it from 15. Mark 16, 15. The gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th verse of the 16th chapter. We're going to read into the 16th verse. See that? And he said, this was after Jesus rose again, okay, and saw them, you know, some believed, some didn't believe, he rebuked them, and then verse 15, he now stated, this says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <laughs> you know, many think that the gospel is only supposed to be preached to humans. Do you see? The gospel transcends humans. Creation is waiting to hear the gospel. They are waiting to be liberated into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. So we haven't even done half of the work yet. We are still dealing with humans. But these humans are supposed to know God and work in so much of his manifestation from spirit, soul, and body that creation gets redemption. Remember, the Bible says in Colossians, when Jesus came, he came so that in him, all creation in heaven and earth will be brought together. In fact, in Ephesians 1, if you read from verse 9, he says he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his pleasure that he has purposed in himself. Verse 10, he stated that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he will gather together all things in one. That's Jesus. 
So creation has not been left out in the work that Jesus did. Many don't know yet. But we'll come into those dimensions. Oh boy. Thank you, Father, forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it says that go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, so human beings and things alike. He that believeth and is baptized is saved. But he that believeth not is damned. And I'd like to explain this to you again. That before Jesus died on the cross, every human being from Adam to that time was under the rule of death because of Adam's sin. In Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says that for by one man sin entered the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men because all have sinned. Okay? So every man was under death, including Abraham, Moses, and all these people. That is why even when they left this world, they did not go directly to God's presence. They were kept in Abraham's bosom. It was only in his death that Jesus went to liberate them from there. Why? They were still in the region of death and needed liberty by the vicarious entrance of Christ in the regions of death. Okay? So every man born, whether they knew it or not, they were born in that region of death. But Jesus went to hell and having sorted out whatever needs to be sorted out, he rose again and brought that Adam to an end. All humanity died in Jesus. He brought that state of death and sin to an end and ushered in a new age of righteousness. So every human has been given the free gift of righteousness. No one again is in the region of sin and death. No one again is in the region of anything called sin nature. Are you following this? Now, everyone is redeemed. Everyone is uh, saved. Redeemed means bought back. So everyone is back to where Adam was, every human. And every human now as a willing being is given a choice again to make. Like Adam was given a choice to either eat of the tree of life and all the trees and not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but he chose that one. Every human now is presented with this life again. So he said that anyone that believes experiences this salvation and all that there is for the person. If now somebody does not believe in Jesus, despite the convincing that the Holy Ghost is doing in the heart and the preaching of the gospel, the person has chosen himself to die like Adam did. It's no more because of Adam's sin. Are you following this? So when we preach the gospel today, we don't preach it because people are still in Adam's sin. We preach it because God is still offering every man as a willing being the opportunity to choose life and step into his abundant plan. And people have the choice to choose or not to choose. Are you following this? So he says that he that believed and is baptized is saved, but he that believed not is damned. Now, we put it that if you don't believe in Jesus, you are, you are playing with something that can be very dangerous to your life. And this is what we said in the writing. We said that, what if all the arguments that make you refuse Jesus are found to be baseless at the end of your life in the physical? Because until the age of deathlessness is ushered in by the church, human beings will still die. And anyone who has not received Christ is not having life enough not to die. He has not eaten of the tree of life. Genesis 3, verse 22 and 23 states clearly that the purpose of the tree of life was that when men eat it, they will live forever and not die. Jesus is that tree of life now. So if you have not received Jesus, it means physical death will still touch you. And even now, if you have received Jesus, there are understandings and truth that are yet to be grasped, that if you don't know them, you will still partake of it. The Bible talks about those who sleep in Christ. So that age is there. Okay? So we are saying that to those who hear of Jesus and they are not believing, they have reasons. Oh, he's just one of the religious leaders. What if you found that to be false at the end of your life on this earth? Oh, Jesus is not really that important to me. 
me, I believe in science. What if all these reasons you are giving? Oh, me, I was born into this religion, and that's my religion. Okay, what if all these reasons you are giving, you found them to be baseless at the end of life? What are you going to do? We'll put it at that. What if you find them to be baseless? And the truth is that you will surely find that all these reasons are baseless. We said here that sometimes people, out of frustration, make statements like, I don't care what is after death. <laughs> you know, they go and quote the Old Testament where the Bible says that the dead do not praise the Lord, there's nothing in the grave. Yes, that is describing the body. But if you read Luke 16, Jesus told you of a rich man who died and he was not sleeping after death. He was in torment after death. So if you are deceived, you think that oh, once you die, that's the end. No, 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 no. You are not a tree. That when you just die, then you dissolve and become humans. No. Yes, when a person dies, his body is lifeless. But a human being is not a body. A human being is spirit, soul, and body. Something went wrong. That's why people have to lay down their bodies temporarily. And that will be corrected before Jesus comes. And that is why when Jesus is coming, those who left their bodies will come and pick their bodies. But they were made to function as spirit, soul, and body. So, out of frustration, people say, I don't care what happens after death. I don't care what happens after death. Somebody will say, you, you are following righteousness, so you leave me. I want to, to get rich by evil means. If I get rich here and I die, I, I don't care what follows. <laughs> Those are statements out of frustration. The truth is that you cannot not care after you die. You will care. You will care. But don't wait till that time. We said here that you may not want to care, but you will realize that you have to care. <laughs> That's the truth we are telling you here. You see, we are here talking. We are here preaching. Like Moses and the prophets were preaching in the days of the story that Jesus gave. Maybe I should read that story to you. Look, chapter 16. Look at it carefully. Look, chapter 16. Um, I'll take it all the way from verse 22. Luke 16, 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. So these are two people died. Their bodies were all in the graves. Okay? So anybody who dies now will be buried. So if you thought that when you are buried, that's the end, look at what is coming. And in hell, the man that was buried, though, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. The man died, though. His body was buried with all the things people do with the body. All right. But while his body was buried, he lifted up his eyes, which means when people die, their eyes are not dead. Eyes are not only these optical eyes, so there are eyes of the soul. He saw Abraham. He recognized. So recognition does not end with brain cells. Hmm. And he cried, so he could cry. His body was there, though. Hmm. And said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. The guy was there, the body was buried, but he needed mercy. And send Lazarus, so he still even knew his level and Lazarus. He told Lazarus was still a servant. That he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this place. He was thirsty. So the faculties of hunger, the faculties of pleasure, the faculties of thirst are not taken away. So yes, the body doesn't know hunger in the grave. The body doesn't know pleasure. It can't hear music. It can't see anybody. But make no mistakes. The spirit and its extension, which is the soul, are intact, even when the body is buried. These are the components that will return to fill the body for the resurrection in the last days. So if you don't understand yourself, and you say, oh, I don't care what happens when I die, I die. Hey, <laughs> it's not true. You say, I don't care. You will want not to care, but you realize that you cannot but to care. This man didn't want to care, but he realized that he has to care. Let's go. 
But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thine lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Now, Lazarus wasn't here because he was poor, or because he suffered evil. Lazarus was here because he heard the preachers. Are you following this? So you can't make a doctrine here and say, ah, those who are rich will go to hell. Those who are rich will be destroyed. <laughs> you are deceiving yourself. Abraham, in whose bosom is it? Just compare the thing. How come Lazarus didn't have a bosom? He has to go to Abraham's bosom. Abraham wasn't poor. He was loaded with gold, silver, and, and servants. No doubt he had a bosom. Lazarus also believed in the same God. But I don't know which principles he was using. So he was poor. He wasn't supposed to be begging at the feet of a, an unrighteous man. The Bible said that the, the wicked shall bow at the gate of righteous, not the righteous begging at the gate of the wicked. So the son of God is not supposed to be begging the world for money. No. Is that the way around? Okay, let's go. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they which will pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. So he knew that he and his brother used to sit down and talk and say, oh, this is Abraham and this is that gospel. <laughs> Forget about them. They don't know life. <laughs> How can you be serious to go like that? Let's get money here and chill and forget. When we die, we die. There's nothing. So he's been having that discussion with his brothers. And then he died. Then he woke up and I said, hey, I thought I wouldn't care, but now I have to care. But his brothers are still talking the same way. So he now says, send somebody to my father's house. For I have five brethren that they may testify unto them. Lest they also come into this place of torment. Oh, this man was good, but it was too late. Now look at what Abraham said. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and prophets. Let them hear them. There are some of you who are alive now. Some of the people you were joking with have gone. And they are asking that they should, people should come from the dead to come and preach to you. And they are saying, they have Dr. Binder. They have this man. They have that person. Let them listen to them. The same thing is happening here today. Then he says, and he said, nay, my father, but if one went into them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. So if we are preaching to you today, and so if, if, if Jesus is real, let him just appear to me. If uh, life after death or whatever is there, let somebody come and show us. If you are waiting for that, even if they rise again today, you won't believe. If you will believe, you will believe us. The point here is that people think they won't care, but they will care. If you don't believe in Jesus, don't let mother deceive you, father deceive you, religion deceive you, company deceive you, education deceive you. It is an individual affair. That day, you see now, this guy and his brothers, they were all deceiving each other. Now he is there. For all you know, the one of the brothers will believe, but he will not get it. It's not a family matter. <laughs> Believing in Christ it's not a boy's boy's matter. It's not a girl's girl's matter. It's not a community matter. It's an individual matter. Whosoever. So you may be in a group and they are talking. Don't be deceived. Some people, they will come and talk to you in a group and say, oh, don't believe. And they will believe secretly. Hmm. The Lord is talking to somebody. So before we run, we said here that you may not want to care, but you care. Look at the, the man in Luke 16, which I just read to you. So, contrary to postmodern ideologies, you don't lose in life when you believe in Jesus. It's rather dangerous when you don't believe in Jesus. The Bible says you will be damned, judged against, sentenced. What does that mean? It is not because God is going to be so mad at you. It's because you have, like the first Adam, you'll be in a state of enmity. And that will be perpetual because there's no more sacrifice. So you remain in that state of without God, which is terrible. It is so terrible, it is equal to being like a state of being in fire. Oh, praise God. So not only will all your life on earth be meaningless under the force of darkness, but you will be eternally in a state of separation where only Satan and his angels were to be. 
Receiving Jesus today is God's ultimate for you to have a great experience in this life and in the kingdom that is to come. So, wonderful viewer, wonderful reader, wonderful listener, don't joke with believing in Jesus. Don't let anybody deceive you. If you don't believe in Jesus now, nothing may seem to be the issue, but it is dangerous to take such a stand. If you have heard our voice this week, harden not your heart. This is your time. I offer you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, the Son of God, into your heart so that you can be awakened into this life he gives you and become a son, a daughter of God. If you want this to happen in your life, say this after me. Say, Jesus, I believe with all my heart that you are God's solution to a lost world. Jesus, I believe you came and you reconciled the whole world to the Father. You also made life available. Jesus, by declaring you Lord of my life, now I receive eternal life. I become a son of God. Oh, hallelujah. For that is all your heart. You are born again, you are a son of God. All you need to do is look for a Bible teaching and practicing church. Get planted there. Remain in that fellowship and keep growing in the truth of God's word until Jesus comes. I'm sure you're going to come away again in the next episode as you take a look at the subject matter of the value of Jesus in your life from another light. Till then, life is good. Enjoy it. If you just got born again today and would like to fellowship with us, call our numbers displayed and connect with any of our new creatures fellowship branches nearest to you. Dambai Pasa in Kwantan Takrati. Kaswa, Lagon, Tachiman, Tema New Town, Ashama New Town, Tema Ashaman, Gulf City, Nungwa, Inkonya, Kolegono Tree Speaking, Kolegono Gas Speaking, Kolegono English Speaking, The Multinationals Church, or our virtual church online. We will be glad to fellowship with you. Do call us. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Pendant. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website finalglobalmovement.org Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Benden. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.